I traveled back to the day when the rich girl confessed her feelings to me. The young girl was wearing a white dress. Her brows soft and gentle. I like you. In the next second, I heard her inner voice. He really believes it. Disgusting. Chapter 1. The cicadas were chirping in the camphor tree, and the people around were jeering, though it was the kind of jeering meant to mock. Someone next to us whistled and laughed. Evelyn's taste is getting a bit heavy lately. Huh? The girl in the white dress ignored them and just stood in front of me. Her expression gentle, the sunlight filtered through her shoulders, and she looked like a princess straight out of a fairy tale. Evelyn, stubborn as always, pressed against the handlebars of my bike, standing on tiptoes, staring straight at me. She said, Lucas, I like you. In her eyes, I saw my reflection, an awkward, stiff 17-year-old boy, thin and frail in an oversized school uniform. I was frozen in place, my face burning red without needing to check, my hands trembling helplessly. After all, this was Evelyn, the girl I had secretly been in love with for a long time. I was about to blurt out, I like you too, when I heard the heart of the pure-looking girl in front of me. He really believes it. Disgusting. I was stunned for a moment and looked at Evelyn again. She was smiling gently, with no sign of the disgust she was feeling inside. She was waiting confidently for my reply. After all, everyone at South City High knew I was Evelyn's simp. Under everyone's watchful eyes, I suddenly took a step back, sorry, I don't like you. Evelyn's expression turned ugly for a moment, no one had ever rejected her before. Just then, a silver-haired girl walked by arrogantly, as if she hadn't noticed the drama unfolding here. I recognized her, she was the notorious school bully, the queen of our school, and Evelyn's arch-nemesis. I pointed at the school bully and said to Evelyn, I like her type, you're too childish, you understand. I wobbled my bike's handlebars, so, Evelyn move aside. Evelyn must have been bewildered, not understanding how the boy who had adored her a second ago could now tell her to get lost. She stiffened, placing her hand on my handlebars, an intense unease showing between her delicate brows. She bit her lip and asked, what's wrong with you? She held onto my bike. I was afraid to pull too hard and accidentally hurt her, leaving me stuck in a dilemma. In the next second, however, the silver-haired girl reached over and grabbed my handlebars, yanking them free from Evelyn's grip with a twist of her wrist. Didn't you hear him? He told you to move. Her voice was crisp, with a hint of coldness. I turned my head slightly. The silver-haired girl had waist-length hair. Her side profile delicate yet exuding an aura that warned people to stay away. Her long silver hair shimmered in the light, cool and rebellious. And then I heard the school bully's panicked inner voice. Shit. He's looking at me. Chapter 2. The school bully rescued me from Evelyn's confession and pushed my pink bike forward. A small group of boys passing by teased her. Becca, when did you stop riding your motorcycle? She kicked one of them, cursing, get lost. I walked beside her, feeling incredibly awkward, and mustered up the courage to speak, hey, school bully, Rebecca. I froze for a moment before realizing she was telling me her name. She lowered her eyes and asked softly, do you like me? My first instinct was to shake my head, but then I heard her eerie inner thoughts, anyone who's used me as a shield ended up in concrete pillars, so I immediately nodded my head vigorously. Rebecca had a pair of charming, almond-shaped eyes, right now. She smiled stopping in her tracks, reaching out to pinch my cheek. Her thumb brushed over the mole under my eye, and she slowly said, from now on, you'll help me with my homework, watch me practice dancing, and give me rides to and from school. Treat me ten times better than you treated Evelyn, got it? Even though she was shorter than me, I instinctively shrank back. I was a bit confused and asked, what do you mean? She condescendingly patted my face, smiling sweetly, it means, I've accepted your pursuit, Rebecca, with her silver dyed hair ear piercings, and face screaming high maintenance. Suddenly, I felt like maybe going back to battle Evelyn was a better option. Chapter 3. I followed the road back home, guided by my memories. This was the villa district. I was 17 when they brought me back from the countryside. At 17, I didn't understand many things, like why my mother was the legitimate wife. Yet I had an older half-brother, Diego, who was just a few months older than me. Everyone liked Diego including Evelyn. Evelyn and Diego were childhood sweethearts from the beginning. Even when she first acted kindly towards me, it was only to convince me to donate a kidney to him. If it weren't for Diego's illness, the Song family would have never thought of bringing me back to them. I wasn't a person. I was medicine. But now, their intentions hadn't been revealed yet. Diego, still recovering at home, was in the garden watering the flowers. When he heard me enter, he looked up and smiled gently. You're home late. We finished dinner a while ago. It didn't matter. I wasn't allowed to sit at the table anyway. Evelyn confessed to me today. The watering can suddenly drop from his hand. Splashing water on his face. He forced a smile. Really? Congratulations. I raised an eyebrow in surprise and said, Of course. I didn't accept. How could she ever be good enough for me? In an instant. 
I was overwhelmed by a flood of vicious, hateful thoughts, coming from the always kind Diego, a walking kidney bag, and he's not grateful to us, how dare he say that? Evelyn only told me she'd approach Lucas, she never said she'd confess to him, this poor kid must be lying, damn it, Lucas should take a good look at himself, so ugly, I snickered, and to think they were relying on me to keep him alive, dream on, I ran upstairs, hearing Diego cough violently behind me, as I reached the top, the family maid, who was closer to me, pulled me aside and whispered, Madam said there's no dinner left for you, I nodded, this was a regular occurrence, as I turned away, I paused for a moment, hearing the maid's inner thoughts, she said, poor thing, chapter 4, before I returned, it was just after Diego's successful recovery, thanks to my kidney, Evelyn had promised that once he was out of the hospital, they'd get engaged, and they did, just not to me, but to Diego, she endured her disgust and revulsion, pretending to be friendly with a country bumpkin like me for so long, and finally got what she wanted, on her engagement day, she leaned into Diego's arms, and in front of all the guests, with the same gentleness as when she confessed, said to me, Lucas, why don't you take a look in the mirror? I looked down and saw my reflection on the polished floor, bloated and overweight from the medication, a far cry from the handsome and charming Diego, perhaps we were always worlds apart, in that moment, I felt my heart shatter into pieces, luckily, it was all just a dream, I woke up right at the moment Evelyn confessed to me, now with the added ability to hear people's thoughts, I grabbed my phone from under my pillow and opened the chat app, where there were already 99 plus messages, only one chat was pinned at the top, Evelyn, the 17 year old me had genuinely liked her, Evelyn's messages were still coming in, and she was probably crying from frustration, Evelyn, Lucas, I'll give you another chance, my confession still stands, Evelyn, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you, congratulations, you succeeded, Evelyn, stay away from Rebecca, she's bad news, there were also several missed calls, scrolling up, I saw messages I had sent, usually a long string of texts, but with no response from the other side, on the rare occasion Evelyn did reply, I'd be over the moon for half the day, and now, Evelyn was still flooding my phone with messages, with a swift motion, I blocked her, then I slowly opened the class group chat, sure enough, they were discussing the incident from this afternoon, the school flower and the school queen fighting over a guy, such a boring headline, they even posted pictures from the scene, I clicked on one and my face immediately flushed, in the photo, the silver haired girl was standing in front of the boy, so close it looked like she was leaning into my arms, she was staring at Evelyn with a provocative look, raising an eyebrow, the chat continued to scroll, who's this guy anyway, looks like a total country bumpkin, even the heartthrob from third high didn't manage to win over Becca, we usually can't post Becca's pictures without her permission, but she didn't say anything today, guess it's real, I exited the chat and saw a new friend request notification, the username was BC, with a note that read, Lucas love interest, my heart skipped a beat, and I accepted, Lucas, I've accepted your friend request, we can start chatting now, after a brief pause, she sent a voice message, her voice was teasing, just friends, I tried to pause the voice message but fumbled, accidentally hitting the video call button, she answered, and suddenly her beautiful face appeared on the screen, so close that her eyelashes seemed like they could brush against my face, I unconsciously pulled my phone back a bit, a laugh came from the other side of the screen, and Rebecca said softly, Lucas, why is your face so red as soon as we start talking? I couldn't say a word for the longest time, then, from somewhere behind her, I heard someone yell, Becca, we wanna see your boyfriend too, it's all over the forums, without even turning around, Rebecca chuckled, get lost, she stretched out her hand to cover the camera like a child hiding their toy, being petty, it was, pretty childish, after a while, Rebecca moved her hand away, the corners of her lips curling up, you couldn't wait to video call me after being apart for a bit, what's wrong, you miss me already, her words were light, almost seductive, just as I was about to explain, my stomach growled loudly, I was starving, before she could react, I quickly hit the red button to end the call, damn, how embarrassing, damn, she's beautiful, chapter 5, it was already night, and the Song family had a curfew, I couldn't leave, and there was no dinner left for me, a grown man, hungry enough to gnaw at the bedpost, I could only resign myself to lying on the bed, waiting for the hunger to pass, outside the window stood a tall camphor tree, if it weren't for this tree, blocking the view and the sunlight, I wouldn't have been given this south facing room, the leaves rustled, and I heard the light tapping of knuckles on the glass, I looked up to see the silver haired girl, clinging to the branches of the camphor tree with reckless abandon, one hand was tapping on the window, and the other held a full bag, with chopsticks hanging from her mouth, I quickly got up, incredulous, and opened the window, the night wind blew in like wildfire, Rebecca handed me the bag and pushed her wind-tousled hair behind her head, my dear classmate Lucas, Becca's version of takeout, 
She smiled, her eyes curving. How about giving me a five-star review? Who's chasing who? Rebecca. Chapter 6 The next day, Rebecca gave me the answer, it was definitely me chasing her. I had to wait for her at school, run errands for her between classes, and even attend her volleyball games to cheer her on. I brought two bottles of sports drinks for Rebecca and slowly made my way to the school gym, only to find it packed, especially with boys. They were all shouting Rebecca and Evelyn, class 1 versus class 3 in a basketball match. And of course, both girls were in those classes. I headed toward Rebecca, but someone stepped in front of me. Evelyn stood there, and her disgusting comment from yesterday still pricked at my heart. Her expression softened slightly as she reached for the drinks in my hand. She used to do this all the time. I would run around fetching water and towels for her during volleyball or dance practice, and she would occasionally throw me a small reward. Evelyn said, since you brought me water, I'll forgive you for yesterday. I dodged her hand and said bluntly, move aside. She froze in place. I walked past her, taking a few quick steps toward Rebecca, and handed her the drinks. Rebecca squinted, inexplicably in a good mood, and lazily said, oh dear, I can't open the bottle, resigned. I took the drink back, twisted the cap off and handed it to her. Rebecca tilted her head back and took a sip, her beautiful lips curling into a smile as she snickered at something behind me. Suddenly, I heard her thoughts. Ugh. I can't stand people who overthink. I turned around, and sure enough, Evelyn was still standing there, looking a bit flustered. Her face was red with anger, and when she noticed me looking, she averted her eyes. She was upset, and I was thrilled. Chapter 7. Rebecca was in top form, unstoppable. A total sports goddess. The gym was filled with waves of cheers. Evelyn, on the other hand, seemed unusually distracted, frequently glancing toward the audience where we were sitting. She was practically crushed. Rebecca's team won without any suspense. After the game, Rebecca walked over to me, her hair tied up in a rare high ponytail, looking radiant and youthful. I handed her some water, and she leaned down, beckoning me with a finger. I obediently leaned closer, my face and neck enveloped by her scent. Rebecca draped her arm over my shoulder, playfully pouting, you watched my game, and you've got nothing to say. I blinked, while the guys nearby had been shouting Becca is so cool. For half an hour, I looked up at her and hesitantly said, Becca is cool. In the next second, something covered my head, it was Rebecca's school jacket, which she had left by the sidelines before the game. The scent of her soap filled the air around me. I heard someone rush over to check on her, Becca, why are your ears and face so red, are you feeling unwell? Rebecca, rare in her embarrassment, snapped, stop talking. Chapter 8 Life without Evelyn at the center was so much easier. My earliest memory of Rebecca was from the time I came out of a convenience store and stumbled upon her fighting with students from another school. I crouched against the wall, scared of getting caught in the crossfire. When it was finally quiet, I dared to look up. Rebecca was the only one left standing. She leaned against the wall, looking at me with a smirk. I was a tall guy, over six feet. What was I scared of? Okay, I was scared, Rebecca asked. Got a band-aid? I did. After hesitating for a moment. I walked over and handed her one. She held out her hand, showing a small scrape on the back of her pale hand, clearly wanting me to put it on for her. Rebecca looked down and asked, you're from Beehive. I nodded, which class, what's your name? Afraid that she might hunt me down later, I mumbled, I'm just the guy who's always liked Evelyn. It wasn't wrong, at a high, maybe no one knew the name Lucas, but everyone knew Evelyn Simp. Just as I was about to put the band-aid on her, Rebecca suddenly pulled her hand back her expression cold. She scoffed, boring. I must have said something that upset her. She walked away, her back looking thin and unsteady. But now, surprisingly, Rebecca seemed easygoing. Even when she got mad, she was quick to forgive. On the other hand, Evelyn always felt unpredictable. When she was nice, it seemed like she really liked me. When she wasn't, she was downright cruel. Fortunately, I no longer had anything to do with her, or so I thought, until Evelyn showed up at the song house after school. I had gone downstairs to get some study guides and ran into Diego, who was happily walking out of the piano room. Evelyn, it's been so long since you visited me, he said, with a trace of complaint in his voice. Evelyn stood silently for a moment before asking, how's your recovery going? Diego rambled on, I've been such a burden to our parents, but I'm okay. You don't need to worry. I'll ask the maid to cut some fruit for you, you love fruit, don't you? Yesterday, Evelyn cut him off, pressing her lips together, no need. She looked up toward the stairs and made direct eye contact with me. She stared at me and said, I'm here to see Lucas. Diego froze, as if he hadn't heard her right, and repeated, Evelyn, who are you here to see? Evelyn ignored him and stubbornly kept her eyes on me. Lucas, come down and talk. Under her gaze, I slowly walked down the stairs. I grabbed the math study guide I'd left on the table and sighed, 
It's not that I'm ignoring you. I was on a video call with Rebecca about math problems. If I keep her waiting, she'll get mad. Diego's face turned pale. Evelyn's face darkened. Chapter 9. That night, Diego threw a fit, demanding to return to school. Being the family's darling, and with his health improving recently, the family agreed. After his return to school was arranged, Diego's mom, for the first time, deigned to speak to me at length. Half advice, half threat. Her words boiled down to one thing. I was to be Diego's study companion. Diego's mother said, Lucas, don't forget that the reason you're able to attend the school is because of the resources I provided. She had always looked down on me as some country bumpkin and never really took me seriously. My dad only got where he was thanks to Diego's mom, a wealthy heiress, so her status was naturally higher. I nodded in silence. When the conversation ended, my dad finally spoke, calling my name, Lucas. I turned around. He said, don't call Diego your brother at school. It's hard to explain. Same father, two brothers, just a few months apart. Who could explain that? Chapter 10. Diego's return to school stirred up quite the commotion. He had taken a break for half a semester due to his illness, but during his time at school, he had been a figure of influence. He and Evelyn were in the same class, and lately, they had been appearing inseparably together. Naturally, the rumors between me and Evelyn quickly died down. Diego, backed by his parents, freely ordered me around. Living under their roof, I had no choice but to comply. On a scorching summer afternoon, I had to run errands to buy ice cream for him and his gang. By the time I returned, drenched in sweat, they were laughing with their feet on my desk. That Lucas, you can tell he's a poor kid from the countryside. First clinging to Evelyn, now hanging out with Rebecca. Lucas's grades are terrible. He's nothing compared to Diego. Evelyn and Diego are childhood sweethearts. Diego, what's Lucas to you? Anyway, I've never seen a dog so obedient. They laughed again, as if they had just heard the world's funniest joke. One of them kicked my desk again. Suddenly, someone said, Hey, Diego, Lucas has the same last name as you, he. Diego's smile froze for a moment but quickly returned to normal. Lucas is the son of our driver. My dad pulled some strings to get him into this school. I interrupted their praises of Diego's kindness and put the now melted ice cream on the table. Diego flicked the contents with his fingers and said, Lucas, it's all melted, do me a favor and go get some more. Even though I relied on the he family's money to attend school, I couldn't swallow my anger anymore. I was ready to flip the table when a sweet voice rang out. Uncharacteristically stern, Evelyn said, Diego, that's enough. The room fell silent. Diego couldn't keep up his smile anymore. Evelyn, you know he's... He swallowed the rest of his words. For some reason, when he looked at Evelyn, he didn't dare finish. I heard Diego's inner thoughts. A mix of anger and frustration. He was thinking, Evelyn and I have been through the same thing. Why is her attitude changing? I glanced at Evelyn, confused about why she was speaking up for me. Maybe they had switched tactics, one playing the good cop, the other the bad. Slowly, I said, what's so over the top about this? You've done worse before, haven't you? Back when I was chasing after Evelyn. She was awful. She once made me go buy coffee in a raging storm. And when I returned, drenched but with the coffee intact, she barely glanced at me and said, Lucas, the coffee's cold. Evelyn clearly remembered it too. The room grew colder, and no one dared speak. Suddenly, I felt someone's arm hook around my neck from behind, pulling me against a soft, feminine body. The silver-haired girl, Rebecca, was smiling, but her gaze was fierce. So this is where you've been, running errands for people. Rebecca scanned the room. Everyone she looked at paled. To this day, the school forums were still buzzing with posts about Rebecca. Her reputation as the school's queen was widespread, making him run errands. Rebecca's voice was sharp, enunciating every word, are you even worthy? Chapter 11. Rebecca casually told the group to go for a run. None of the boys dared to argue. They obediently did as she said. Even Diego wasn't spared. A bunch of them ended up drinking the melted ice cream and running laps under the scorching sun. While classmates watched from the balconies and the headmaster, bald and sweating, rushed to the track, the mastermind, Rebecca, stood beside me, her silver hair flamboyant as ever, watching them with an expressionless face, she wasn't happy, Rebecca, I called her name, she turned to me, and the displeasure on her face instantly melted away, don't do this next time, it doesn't look good, it wasn't that I pitied Diego and the others, it was that it wasn't worth it for Rebecca to do this for me, since my mom died, I'd been self-reliant, and no one had ever treated me so kindly. Even though Rebecca was said to have done worse things before, such blatant rule-breaking could damage her reputation. Rebecca rested her chin in her hand and leaned in close. So close I could count her eyelashes. I saw my reflection in her eyes. Did it feel good, Diego? She asked. I hesitated for a moment. It did. Rebecca smiled like a cat who'd just caught a mouse. Then it was worth it. Chapter 12. After Rebecca stepped in, 
Diego didn't dare boss me around anymore, even at home. He was too scared to tattle. Just hearing Rebecca's name was enough to shut him up. Maybe what I said to Evelyn had also struck a nerve, because she stopped bothering me too. Occasionally, I'd see Evelyn and Diego walking together at school. One moment, Diego would be all gentlemanly with her. The next, he'd look at me with nothing but disgust. He must have had a natural talent for changing his expression, like one of those face-changing opera performers. But Evelyn didn't seem as close to him as I'd imagined. Not that it mattered to me anymore. I had one task, study hard. Well, maybe now I had another task, helping my struggling classmate Rebecca with her studies. On the day of the monthly exam results, the bulletin board was crowded. I hadn't done well in the past, but during my bedridden days, I had spent all my time reading high school textbooks, hoping to retake the college entrance exams one day. So this time, I was eager to see where I ranked. Diego and his group were crowded around the top of the board. Diego, you're ranked 29th in the year. That's amazing. Of course, it was amazing. The Song family had hired top tutors for him. First place, as expected, goes to Evelyn. They turned around and saw me searching from the bottom of the list. Snickering. I heard Diego's smooth, mocking voice. Some people at least know their place. Looking for their name where it belongs. Suddenly, someone tugged on his sleeve and cursed softly. Diego. His rank is, ahead of yours. I was just a few spots above Diego. He stared at the board. Stunned. Unable to believe it. Someone read my ranking out loud, Lucas, 20th. I couldn't believe it was that high. I suppressed my excitement and finally found Rebecca's name. She had jumped to the middle of the pack. Lucas's tutoring sessions were working. I turned around and saw Rebecca walking down the corridor with a group of girls. Afraid she wouldn't see me, I waved and happily called her name, Rebecca. She looked up and met my gaze. You ranked 300th. I puffed out my chest. Proud. You got 300th place, Rebecca. Rebecca's steps faltered and the girls around her started teasing her, nudging her with their elbows, Becca, the guy you like is so cute. Rebecca looked at me, and under everyone's watchful eyes, her face turned bright red in an instant, I heard Rebecca's inner voice, a little annoyed, she was thinking, damn it, he's way too good at flirting. Chapter 13, many people liked Rebecca, but most of them admired her from afar due to her bad reputation, however, today, one of the few who openly liked her came to find me, it was David the heartthrob from the neighboring third high, who had acted in a few well-known youth dramas. I had heard that Rebecca had once fought for him, but for some reason, they never got together. Early in the morning, David was waiting for me at the school gate. Rebecca and I usually went to school together now, but today she had gone to the convenience store, and I was waiting for her at the gate. I never expected David to show up first. David was good-looking, in that bad boy kind of way. You must be Lucas, he said. I nodded. David got straight to the point, you can't win against me. So just stay away from Rebecca. Becca's cold on the outside but kind on the inside. And sometimes she just pities people, which can give the wrong impression. Besides, it was all over the forums last night. If I were you, I'd be too ashamed to show my face at school. Becca's only interested in you for the moment. If you keep pushing, you'll only embarrass yourself. Forums. What forums? Before I could respond, David's eyes lit up as he looked past me, calling out, Becca. Before I could react, a cup of soy milk and a bun were shoved into my hands and the silver-haired girl appeared at my side, biting on a carton of milk, stuffing a handful of candy into my pocket, and zipping up my half-open backpack. Rebecca didn't even look at David and mumbled through the milk carton. What are you talking about? Her actions were so smooth, as if she had done them countless times before. David stared at Rebecca's hand as she zipped up my bag, his face turning pale. Becca, you don't let anyone get that close to you. How can you do these things for him? Rebecca rolled her eyes in exasperation and spat out two words. Who are you? Chapter 14. It turns out being a celebrity doesn't help with mental resilience. Rebecca's few words left David devastated. As Rebecca and I walked toward the school, she suddenly spoke, her tone proud, I don't know him. I never fought for him either. Those were just rumors. The only person I've ever stood up for is you. I was taken aback, realizing that Rebecca was explaining herself to me. I looked up at Rebecca, her light-colored hair making her skin appear even paler. She lazily added, I'm not like some people who liked someone else before liking me. Luckily, they realized their mistake in time. I wasn't sure who she was throwing shade at, but in the end, she shot me a glance and teased. Right, Lucas. Chapter 15. After the morning's drama, I couldn't shake a sense of unease. As soon as I walked into school, I felt something was off. It was especially noticeable during the breaks, people's stares were odd, and I could hear the thoughts around me. Lucas is actually an illegitimate child. No wonder he's too timing. It's in his blood. If I were him, I wouldn't dare show my face in front of Diego let alone attend the same school. Oh my god, so disgusting. 
I realized what had happened and quickly checked my phone in the bathroom. Sure enough, there was a trending post on the forum, exposing Lucas, the illegitimate child of a high, who's two-timing. The post was anonymous, written by someone claiming to be a regular classmate who couldn't stand Lucas anymore. It presented a twisted, dramatic version of my life, turning everything upside down. It claimed Diego's parents were the true, loving couple, while my mother had schemed to marry into the Song family by having me. It painted Diego as the innocent victim, sick because of my mother's actions, while I shamelessly pursued both Evelyn and Rebecca at the same time. No need to look at the comments, they were all insults. I was so angry my head felt foggy. None of it was true. In reality, it was Diego's mother who had set her sights on my dad when he was newly married. She became the other woman, and eventually, they ran off together. My dad never looked back, leaving us behind. My mother, even until her death, still hoped he would change his mind. I left the bathroom and washed my face at the sink. Someone handed me a tissue, it was Evelyn. She spoke softly. I've already asked someone to handle the forum post. Don't worry. I looked at her reflection in the mirror. Her white shirt and gentle expression. You knew about this all along. I was referring to the content in the post. Evelyn closed her eyes briefly. A self-loathing look on her face. And nodded. I'll make sure this is suppressed. No one will talk about your background anymore. Don't be mad at me, Lucas. Once this blows over, let's just pretend it never happened. Okay. She didn't even bother asking me if it was true. She had already assumed it was a fact. She opened her eyes again, looking at me softly, you see, I've been helping you from the moment we first met, come back to me, Lucas, I wiped my face, threw the tissue in the trash, and turned to her calmly, Evelyn, I'm not an illegitimate child, chapter 16, from the moment we first met, Evelyn had always helped me, when I first arrived here, I couldn't even find the Song family's house and got lost in the villa district, chased all over by some neighbor's dog, my mom had died of rabies, so I had always been terrified of dogs, that day, it had started raining. I ran and dropped all my ragged belongings along the way. The dog knocked me down, but then I heard a whistle, and the dog immediately jumped off me, happily running away. As I shakily gathered my things in the rain, tears streaming down my face, an umbrella appeared above me. The hand holding the umbrella was slender, and the girl standing there in a white dress was cold and elegant. For a moment, I felt ashamed of myself. Did you chase the dog away? Did you save me? What's your name? She said, I'm Evelyn. After that, I lived under the Song family's roof, ignored at school, but Evelyn always helped me. I stuck by her side. Maybe even I couldn't tell if what I felt for her was love. After all, from the start, she had her own motives. Evelyn was complicated. Sometimes I thought she liked me, she even wrote her name in my textbooks. But the next second, she'd get mad and scratch it out. I always knew she was disgusted by something about me, but I never knew what. Now I understood. She had always believed I was an illegitimate child, that the blood in my veins was dirty. Loving Evelyn was worse than loving a dog. Chapter 17 I walked straight to class 1's door and, as expected, found a crowd gathered around Diego. He looked forlorn and pitiful, while everyone around him was busy comforting him. When they saw me standing at the door, they glared at me. Thanks to Rebecca's intervention last time, no one dared to insult me openly. Afraid of getting on the wrong side of the school's queen, Diego had always put on a good front with me. But lately, something had changed. First, he'd made a fuss about returning to school. Then there was the ice cream incident. Our pretense of civility was completely shattered. He looked up at me, his eyes red, his knuckles white from clenching his fists. Lucas, can't you leave my family alone? I heard his inner thoughts again, half angry, half hurt. Diego was thinking, Evelyn just went to see him. He used to hate illegitimate children as much as I did. How did things end up like this? Leaning against the wall, I chuckled. Of course not. Diego's expression froze. I walked over, placing my hand on his desk. Looking down at him, that post is a pack of lies. I'm not an illegitimate child. The other child born from an affair is someone else. Diego had been kept in the dark by his parents and genuinely believed his mother was the rightful wife. That's why he harbored so much hostility toward me. Now, hearing this, he instinctively snapped back. What proof do you have? I shook my head and straightened up. Looking at him with a hint of contempt. I don't need proof. Whoever makes accusations has to provide the evidence. The innocent don't have to prove their innocence. I added. I'll call the police. Justice will give me the answer. Did the person who posted that rumor think anonymity would protect them from responsibility? Diego's face turned pale. Before I could call the police, justice arrived on its own. Someone muttered. The forum's anonymous feature just went offline. The person next to me was hiding their phone behind a book, reading the post. The name of the poster was now clear, Class 1's Diego. The looks people gave Diego were strange. After comforting him for so long, they realized he had written the post himself. What a two-faced act. Diego, with his thin skin, blushed furiously and fainted from the stress. 
Chapter 18. In the VIP ward, Diego had just come out of dialysis, looking pale, while the nurse was bustling around and his mother fed him pre-cut fruit. I was getting scolded by Song's father. Lucas, I'm really disappointed in you. Is this how you repay us? By making your brother so angry that he ends up in the hospital. He said nothing about what Diego had done. I lowered my eyes in annoyance, staring at the spotless floor, and thought about the time I was left alone in the hospital. After giving Diego a kidney, their attitude toward me had turned cold. When I first came here, I wanted to show my long-lost biological father that I could be an excellent son. But things didn't go as planned. Fortunately, I had stopped caring a long time ago. I've heard the whole situation. I also heard you want to call the police. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't go back to school. After all, those are Diego's classmates. And this will affect him badly. I'll arrange for you to transfer. Realizing his tone was too harsh. Song's father softened his voice. We're family. Lucas. Try to understand and show some consideration. All right. No. I shook my head. Song's father was stunned. This was the first time I had ever refused him. What did you just say? He asked harshly. My throat felt dry. The atmosphere in the room turned tense. The door opened suddenly, and a group of people crowded in, with a silver-haired girl standing at the entrance. She spread her hands. Lucas, come here. I quickly walked toward her, lowering my voice. Why are you here? Rebecca placed her hand on my back. I didn't want them giving you a hard time. I'm here to back you up. Song's father clearly recognized Rebecca, and a hint of flattery appeared on his face. I had no doubt that he was about to ask me to help him connect with her. I let out a breath, feeling oddly emboldened and repeated. I said, no, I will report it to the police. I'm not donating another kidney, and whether Diego lives or dies has nothing to do with me. You're lucky I haven't punched any of you yet. I turned to look at Diego, who was clutching his blanket in panic. Diego's hatred toward me stemmed from being a half-sibling, from Evelyn, and from his jealousy over my health. I shattered the dream he had been living in for years, Diego. Your mom is a full-blown mistress. Your dad, he had an affair while married. Diego, you're the illegitimate child from that post you wrote. Chapter 19. After saying my piece, I left the ward, leaving chaos behind. I sat in the hospital corridor when someone suddenly squatted in front of me. Rebecca and her crew had lingered by the ward's door for a while longer. I didn't need to ask to know they were covering for me. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't have gotten away so easily today. I had always been spineless, and now I even needed a girl to clean up after me. I clenched my hands and looked into Rebecca's eyes. Thank you, Rebecca. Sunlight filtered through making her features look even clearer. After hesitating for a moment, I asked, why are you so good to me? Rebecca rested her chin in her hand and smiled. Are you flirting or asking me seriously? My face flushed red instantly. I wasn't flirting. I wasn't complimenting you. I was genuinely asking. Rebecca. Rebecca frowned slightly, as if she were genuinely considering her answer. Do I need a reason? Some people just shine so brightly that when you see them, you want to give them the best of everything. The first time I saw you, you were being chased all over by Sue family's dog. It was pretty special. I was the one who whistled to call the dog away. I was going to check on you, but then I saw Evelyn. She annoyed me, so I left. If I had known it was you, I wouldn't have turned around. If I had known it was Lucas, I wouldn't have let anyone else get ahead of me. That one turn, and all Lucas could see was Evelyn, never noticing me again. I watched him run errands for Evelyn, saw him get hurt but still like her, watched them look like a couple, and I had no choice but to step aside. My expression shifted slightly, realizing Rebecca had helped me before Evelyn even got involved. I waited for her to continue, but she didn't. Instead, she looked at me with clear, playful eyes. And then, why so eager to know my feelings? Lucas. Rebecca stood up, pretending to speak casually, that Sue family dog is usually very well behaved and never runs off. It listens to its owner. Chapter 20. Rebecca took me to the police station to file a report, and the forum post remained up, apparently. Diego had tried to delete it several times, but it couldn't be removed. Just like when the forum's anonymous feature bugged out and got disabled that day, the comments had already turned against him. Rebecca and I had a good laugh over the content of the post. She scoffed at the part about me too timing, coldly saying, Evelyn, a boat worth stepping on, please. The case was resolved quickly. Not only did Diego have to issue a public apology, but I also received financial compensation. It wasn't much, but it was enough to free me from the Song family's control. Covering my tuition and living expenses, Diego admitted to making up the rumors, which was also an indirect admission that he was the real illegitimate child. After that, his condition worsened. Adding insult to injury, the Song family's business suddenly took a nosedive, but none of that mattered to me. I was enjoying my compensation from the Song family, sipping on a carton of yogurt while typing on my phone. Lucas, I knew justice would prevail. Rebecca, and what about me? I thought for a moment, smiled, and typed. 
Becca will always lead me to justice. There was no reply for a long time. I set my phone aside and focused on my homework. When I remembered to check again, a new message had been sitting there for a while. Rebecca had sent a voice message. Her voice was sweet as it flowed through the speaker. Lucas, what should I do? It feels like you're about to catch up to me. Chapter 21 Under the camphor tree, the girl in the white dress, Evelyn, had been standing for a long time. The dappled sunlight falling on her was soft. As I walked past, she called my name, stopping me in my tracks. I turned around, not understanding why. Evelyn's expression was complicated, as if she felt a sense of relief, but also something else. Sorry, she murmured, biting her lip. I never thought I would hear Evelyn say those two words. She didn't look as hard to approach as Rebecca, but deep down, she was prouder than anyone, the kind of person who'd rather die than lower her head. Patiently, I asked, is it because you misunderstood that I was an illegitimate child? Evelyn stared at me for several seconds, her eyes welling up with tears. For everything that happened before, Diego had been telling me for years that he had a half-brother. I took his word for it, seeing that I showed no reaction. Evelyn lowered her eyes, looking fragile like glass. Have you met my little brother? Before I came back in time. Yes, I had. He was an adorable chubby kid who liked chasing after Evelyn. But Evelyn treated him indifferently, even cruelly. After a pause, Evelyn spoke, reopening an old wound. He's the child of the woman my father kept outside our home. It dawned on me that Evelyn's conflicting attitude toward me was her way of projecting her own pain. She had even helped the Song family deceive me because, in her eyes, it was something I owed them. Evelyn. I suddenly called her name, giving her a gentle smile. She looked up, holding her breath. It had been a long time since she'd seen me smile at her. I could hear the bitterness in her heart, but I really, truly, like Lucas, I like you, I said. Watching as Evelyn's eyes lit up, I let out a sneer. Did you really believe that? Disgusting. Evelyn needed to understand that some things can't be fixed with a simple apology. I threw those same words back at her. Evelyn staggered slightly, staring at me in silence and pain. Perhaps, in that moment, she finally realized what she had lost. Lucas, a lazy voice called from behind me, tinged with irritation. I turned around quickly to see Rebecca standing not far behind us, holding a strawberry-flavored ice cream. Her beautiful face was cold and I suddenly felt like I had been caught cheating. Forgetting Evelyn, I quickly walked toward Rebecca, just two steps away from her. She suddenly threw herself into my arms. I caught her, steadying her, but I heard her let out a small cry of pain. I immediately looked down. Did you hurt yourself? Where does it hurt? Rebecca took my hand, slowly guiding it to her chest, just above her heart. Under my palm, I felt her soft skin and the intense, rapid beating of her heart. I looked up to see that there wasn't a trace of pain on her face. Instead, she tilted her head, her expression playful and mischievous. It hurts right here. I sighed helplessly. Rebecca pouted. Dear Lucas, I can understand that there are other girls around you. After all, we're not officially together. But as your pursuer, I'm feeling a little insecure. So, so, I've decided to change the word pursuer to something else. Can you guess what word? What word? Rebecca stomped her foot and gritted her teeth. Girlfriend, I couldn't hear any more thoughts. Just the sound of two hearts beating loudly. Neither of us said a word as the sunlight poured down. In any case, there was still a long road ahead and a lot of life left to live. After all, this was a new beginning. In reality, the school queen, Rebecca, wasn't that hard to catch after all.